Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 59. Hey, if you want to download these PowerPoints or the Excel workbooks for chapter 7, click on the link directly below the video and then scroll down to the finance class. Hey, we're in chapter 7. We got to talk about stocks. Last chapter we talked about bonds and we looked at a lot of the uh, some characteristics of bonds and a lot of the math for valuing bonds. In this chapter we're going to talk a little bit about stocks and look at just one type of valuation model used for valuing stocks. Hey, stocks and bonds. What are they really? Oh yeah, our basic accounting and finance formula. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Bonds one way to get cash into the corporation to buy profitable assets. Equity, stocks, right? Another way to get cash into the firm to buy profitable assets. All right, so that is the point. We get cash in, we think we have a good idea, we want to buy a company or some new trucks or whatever it is. Uh, we either issue debt or equity. Now bondholders are creditors. They have a fixed claim to cash flow, right? Oh yeah, we did that last chapter. It was relatively easy to figure out how much a bond is worth because it's a contract, right? The cash flow is there. Stockholders are owners, not creditors, right? They have a residual claim to cash flow. What does residual mean? Whatever's left over. So what this means is that after paying all the bondholders, if there's any money left over, the board of directors will declare some dividends and then the stockholders will get cash from called dividends. Also, bondholders are first in line when the company goes bankrupt. That's another meaning of the word residual. Whatever's left over in bankruptcy, the stockholders get. All right, difference between debt and equity. Debt is not an ownership interest. Equity is an ownership interest. Hey, what's the upside of equity, right? We said residual, residual. Uh, it sounds like uh, debt's really good. That's the way to go. Ah, but if you're an owner and the company's wildly successful, you're not bound by a contract which says pay 5% interest, right? You can get the upside, which can be a, a lot greater. You bear the risk, though, of if the company goes under, you, you can lose everything. Creditors do not have voting rights. Ah, stockholders, common stockholders mostly, vote for the board of directors. And sometimes other issues, the board of directors then hires the manager. So you get to kind of decide how the companies run, or in theory anyway. Interest is considered a cost of doing business, and boom, tax deductible, right? So if you have a deduction on your tax return, that's as if there is cash coming in. You get to avoid whatever the amount is that much in taxes. Dividends are not considered a cost of business and are not tax deductible. In fact, they're taxed twice, right? The profit was taxed once and, taxed once, and then when you pay it out to shareholders, they're taxed again. Creditors have a legal recourse if interest or principal payments are missed, right? They can, uh, it, it's a contract, so if you don't pay, you can sue. Dividends are not a liability of the firm, and stockholders have no legal recourse if dividends are not paid. Uh, so, and ultimately all stocks have to pay out dividends, but you know, d during uh, the early years of a company when they're just conserving their cash and reinvesting it, right? Or when a company gets in trouble, if the board of directors uh, do not declare dividends, the stockholder just has to sit there and go, oh well, I'm not getting any cash. Uh, excess debt can lead to financial distress and bankruptcy. Oh, an all equity firm cannot go bankrupt, right? They can, you can lose all your money, but you're not going to go bankrupt because it's all yours. All right, now we need to talk about common stock and then compare that to uh, preferred stock, and sometimes there's other types of stock. Hey, you buy one stock, you get to vote for the directors of the corporation who in, who in turn decide the managers to hire, right? So you kind of get to decide how the company works. Uh, generally, one stock equals one vote for director position on board of directors. Now, this is not always the case because you can just, um, stock is a contract, right? So some companies have written up contracts where maybe they have one stock and they get three votes or something. Right, but this is common stock and this is uh, 
generally true. Um, of course, if you buy one stock, you get dividends. Uh, and you get a claim to any remaining assets in bankruptcy after the creditors. All right, so more features of common stocks. Uh, voting rights. Stockholders elect directors. Yeah, we talked about that. But there's let's talk about cumulative, straight, and proxy voting. Cumulative is a type of voting designed to help uh, shareholders who don't have a, a large number of stocks. So directors are elected all at once, right? So however many directors there are, if you have one stock and there's four directors, you have four votes. So when the directors are elected all at one time, then you can pile all of your votes into one particular candidate, right? Straight voting, directors are elected one at a time, right? So here you have one stock, four directors, so you get four votes, right? But here you're just going to have one vote. Right? And so ultimately, you need uh, more than 50% of the stock to vote in all your directors and control with straight voting. And again, that's um, determined by contract. Um, one, uh, there's an example in the book, and I actually have an example over here in the slide and in the Excel workbook. I'm not going to go through it, but uh, with cumulative voting, uh, if the votes are staggered, which means there's four board of directors, right? But if you only vote for them two, and then later you vote for two, right? The fewer directors, uh, the less helpful this is. The more directors are voting in at once, the more helpful cumulative voting is for the uh, minority stockholder. All right, um, proxy voting. That just means you can let someone else vote for you. By the way, isn't this annoying? I did uh, handwritten notes and all the earlier ones, but now I'm using PowerPoint. And I'm not even running the PowerPoint. Uh, I don't like PowerPoint so much. Uh, but uh, there was so much typing, I didn't want to you know, write it out. It's, the handwritten notes are great for uh, when there's lots of pictures and diagrams. All right, proxy voting, letting someone else vote for you. Yeah, you know, if you have just a few stocks here and there, maybe the institutional uh, investors who have a lot of the stock, right? Um, like pension funds and things like that, they might go out and they know that you're not really going to vote. So they try to go out and uh, collect your votes, asking uh, you to let them vote for you. So that's letting someone else vote. And so a proxy fight is when two institutional investors will try and get as many people to give them their proxy votes so they can accumulate enough votes to accomplish whatever it is they want to accomplish. All right, voting. Um, there's some other slides here if you want to look at them. Uh, we need to talk about uh, classes of stock. Now, most st stock is kind of like we described. It's common stock, and then there's this thing called preferred stock that we'll talk about in just a moment. But sometimes there's different contracts, right? So there really can be many different types of stocks. For example, at Google, the founders wanted the company to not be evil. That's like their mission statement, right? And, and also their mission statement is to uh, put together all the world's information and make it uh, easily available to everyone, but uh, not be evil. <laughs> and so what happened when they went public, they decided, the uh, original creators of Google, they decided to create their own special class of stock. Um, and so they created this type of stock to give them more voting rights, right? I don't remember exactly what the number of votes are, but when they have one stock, that entitles them to vote a lot more times than other people. This way, they can keep control, right? So ultimately, uh, anytime you have uh, a stock with a contract that uh, gives you more voting rights, the, the goal is to control the voting of the directors, etc. All right, some other features um, in common stocks, share proportionally in declared dividends. All that means is if you have, um, if they declare 25 cents per share, right? That means you have 10 shares. That means you get 10 quarters. Share proportionally in remaining assets, same thing, right? 
you whatever the proportion you have, that's the proportion of the assets uh, you'll get during liquidation. Also, common stock often has a preemptive right. It, um, and what this means is if you have 10% of the company and they're going to go out and offer new stock, you have the right to keep that 10%. So whatever number of the new stock issue, uh, then you have the right to, to uh, buy that many. So you can keep your 10%. Sometimes there's a special voting on special issues that uh, the common stock contract might uh, allow, for example, mergers. Now, dividends. Next slide, dividends. Dividends, we already mentioned that not a liability of the firm until the dividend has been declared by the board, right? And firms cannot go bankrupt for not declaring dividends, right? Aha, uh -huh, but if they don't pay interest, that debt side of it, you bet you uh, the, the contract allows the creditors to go after the company. Dividends and taxes. Uh, dividends are not considered a uh, business expense. We already mentioned that and are not tax deductible. Interest is, though. Dividends received by individuals are taxed. Right. That means it's taxed twice, right? The profit from the firm is taxed. And then when these poor individuals, right, they get their dividends and they are taxed again. Now there's some exemptions and uh, IRS law. Go look this up if you want the exact details. But guess what? Dividends received by corporations have a minimum 70% exclusion from taxable income. Now what does this mean, right? A corporation owns another corporation, right? So it's as if they're really part of that company, right? I, when you get up to 100%, so you, com you completely own this other company, you sure, IRS says, yeah, yeah, you own the company. You're not going to get taxed. All right, next topic, preferred stock. Uh, now, preferred stock is just a different contract, right? And what does the word preferred mean? Uh, we like this one better, right? It means during bankruptcy, if you have preferred stock, you are in front of common stockholders in terms of getting the remaining assets during liquidation. It also means that your dividends are paid before common stockholders. So if you have a preferred stock contract, it means you get paid. If anything's left over, then the common stockholders uh, get paid. Dividends. There's a stated dividend. Now, that's just a fancy way, you know, when you have a bond contract or a debt contract, it says, we're going to pay you 10%. Well, here, they call it stated dividend, but it's the exact same amount each time. Kind of sounds like getting close to interest or debt. Nevertheless, they've classified it as a stock and a dividend, so they call it stated dividend. All right? And this must be paid before dividends can be paid to common stockholders. Still not a liability. Most preferred dividends are cumulative. What does cumulative mean? It just means to build up over time. It means if you miss a payment of stated dividend it, on the books, they, you, they remember that. So next time they go to pay, you get the current one and the past missed uh, stated dividend. That's called arrearage. Preferred stock generally does not carry voting rights. Oh, right. So now this is even sounding more like debt. And in fact, you know, what are what is debt and stock? It's all just a contract, right? So a company, um, you know, wrote this contract up, and it sounds pretty much like debt, right? Stated dividend, so that means the same amount each time. They get paid before the common stockholders, and uh, uh, no voting rights. All right. Um, also, in liquidation, they are paid what's called the stated value. Up here, we said stated dividend. That just means in the contract it says we're going to give you five bucks each time, uh, once a year, right? Here, there's a stated value for the actual stock, right? So if they go in liquidation, right? Liquidation, they just go look at the contract as a stated value, and that's how much they pay the stockholder. So, man, it sounds exactly like debt. So, and in accounting, um, the old issue has always been do we record it as debt or equity? So, really, conceptually, it sounds like half and half. And that, to me, it sounds more like debt than, than anything. All right. Um, 
that's a little bit about preferred stock and common stock and uh, we have one more video we'll talk a little bit about the financial markets in before we get into our videos using Excel and looking at the math of how to value stocks and in the videos about valuing stocks think about this what's a dividend right it's cash and when you buy a stock you hope to get cash in the future so just think about that is there a way we've already learned in this class to actually value the stock all right, we'll leave you with that tidbit, and uh, we'll see you next video.